What's up, MK Squad? So we back with another legendary video, baby Keita and Kiana. This year, you already know about the title below, what's going on, and what we watching today. And for you newcomers, make sure you subscribe because we posting legendary videos every single day, reacting to what y'all want to see. So make sure y'all comment down below what videos y'all want us to react to, because we sure will. And let's get into the video. I don't want to do no more talking and waste no more time. There's Big Sean and his possible connection to the Illuminati. How Jay-Z has overcome some of the greatest obstacles and some pretty candid looks at what drugs can do to a family. All of this on today's most amazing top 10 list. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Blessings by Big Sean featuring Drake and Kanye West. At a first glance, this song is just a moment where all the rappers can take a step back and reflect on being grateful for everything they have and everything that they have achieved. But we really get the hidden dark message when we watch the music video for the song. In the video, there are a lot of Illuminati references and symbolism. Whether or not you think that this is their... Jay-Z always been known for the Illuminati talk, though. The mission to being a part of the Illuminati is up to you, but let me show you the imagery that I'm talking about. The video starts off with Big Sean walking on clouds, and then he begins confessing to a priest who is played by himself. This is a reflection of one of the most prevalent principles of the Illuminati, that they are all God. Catholics go in confessionals too, though. You can't just automatically assume this is Illuminati. Gods. To push this even further, Drake flashes the triple six hand, which shows his approval of the Antichrist. We then see Big Sean on a staircase, which is homage to the Freemasonry's Jacob's Ladder, and his arms are also stretched out, which is to mimic Jesus on the cross. It wow. is no shock well, I, I could see that um, symbolic significance in that. As listeners, that these guys are full of themselves, but it is kind of shocking to see just how much. Coming in number nine, we have Stand By. I feel as though they try to relate to the secular world and also the religious world. So they have religious imagery in it and they also have secular things for the non-Christians out there so they can relate. You see what I'm saying? And just having, it could be non-secular and non-religious. It could just be just general wisdom in the song. You feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, we don't know, but that's that's interesting topic. We, we go on and on and about that. By Eminem. I mean, right off the bat, we know that Stan is a pretty controversial song. It's about a super fan who loses his mind and gives everything up to try and... When you think of DraftKings... Uh, what... at the drunk. Closer to Eminem, this guy abuses his girlfriend, follows Eminem from show to show, and writes some letters non-stop to try and get his attention. The term Stan has stemmed from this song. For those of you who don't know, that means when you support something wholeheartedly. Now, even though there are the very obvious signs that this song is dark, with the Stan superfan dying at the end of the song, there is a part in the music video where Stan puts his pregnant girlfriend into the trunk of the car. Now, some people think that this is reference to Eminem's song, Kim, where he raps about doing the same thing to his ex-girlfriend. People think that with multiple references from songs that this might have actually happened in real life or it could just have been a dark fantasy. And guys, make sure that you like this video. It really helps us out. Coming in at number 8, we have Kings Never Die by Eminem. It is Eminem pretty famous, unsurprising that on. Eminem has two tracks that made it onto this list. In the song, he talks about his anger towards other whack rappers, critics, and ignorant fans who spew hate when they don't really know what they're talking about. But at one point in the song, he talks about how he would sell his soul to the devil in order to remain on top of the rap game. Whoa. He then goes on to discuss, while he loves rap and the music, he hates fame and how he has had to make a lot of personal sacrifices, sacrifices. in his yeah. life. Yeah, I can see that. Because with, with fame, you chasing more of what the people want. It could drag you to that instead of being yourself. Passion and the only thing he's done that's, for the last that's years. lessons, though. So it can't be easy to just quit and leave the game altogether. Coming in number seven, we have Changes by Tupac. One of the greatest hits to come from one of the greatest artists of all time. Changes is a song that highlights the struggle of growing up black in America. Growing up in a world where you come out of the womb poor. Your parents barely have enough money to buy you anything. And you have to rob and steal just to eat. About how racism towards you will keep pushing you down. And how hard it is to get out of the ruthless cycle. In the song, he says, I wake up in the morning and ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? Honestly, this is one of the first public figures in the black community to start openly talking about mental health. And the song is about how things never change and about how the system is made to keep you in the same spot and keep the struggle real. In our number six spot today, we've got Kill Jay-Z, which is surprisingly by Jay-Z. This is the first song on the album 4 for 
44. The song is mostly about the killing of his ego and a reflection on his past mistakes. Why would you be surprised about Jay-Z if he's writing about himself anyway? ...and how he handled them, but there are a few dark moments hidden in this song. One is right at the beginning when he talks about shooting his drug-addicted brother when he was only 12 years old for stealing his jewelry. Luckily, his brother was fine and didn't end up pressing charges, but it's really sad that he was in this situation to begin with. Jay-Z also talks about his father leaving his family at a young age and how that hurt him, and he had to build up a wall in order to protect himself from feeling that kind of hurt again. Of course, he's in but the now, streets. as an adult, he's had to work... In the streets, you know what I'm saying? If you're doing what he's doing, you know, dealing with drugs and dealing and all that, you can't even really have a, um emotional emotional um you know emotional part of yourself you just gotta stay hard and just be strictly business work on tearing down those walls in order to be there and be and you gotta watch after yourself all the time you know what i'm saying you don't know what nobody could do you can't trust you can't trust nobody everybody wants just money selfish. he then goes on to talk about a moment from 1999 on december 2nd of that year jay was at a release party for q-tip's debut album amplified before the party there was bootleg copies of jay-z's upcoming album floating all throughout the hip-hop world at the party was was lance un rivera who was a music producer in the hood you always go have bootleg somewhere sir and it was rumored that he may have had something to do with the leak of jay's new album after a confrontation at the party quickly turned into a physical altercation, Jay-Z ended up stabbing Lance. He later turned himself in, and while he was facing a possible 15-year sentence, he ended up with only three years of probation. Coming in number five, we have Kendrick Lamar's Swimming Pool. Some people think that the song Swimming Pools could be about someone losing their mind. I always thought that it was just about getting lit and having a good time. But in the music video of the song, we see a bunch of bottles fall from the sky and shatter on the ground. Now, this wasn't the boys celebrating because they just smashed another 26er, but apparently this is supposed to represent someone's mind breaking. There's also a line where he says now open up your mind and listen. This could be showcasing someone with schizophrenia being communicated with from someone inside their own mind. In a number four spot That's today, we have D-Rugs by Cameron. This song is about children... I don't really listen to Cameron, but this interesting. ...children whose parents choose a life of drugs over them. The song starts off with Cameron just speaking the intro and he says, remember parents, kids don't yeah. ask to be Born, which is a really strong but sad start to what is a dark song with an important message. In the song, he refers to the drugs as a girlfriend or boyfriend that the parents are choosing. He talks about his mom being addicted to cocaine and seeing her do the drugs and watching her addiction and dependence grow. It's really that relate back to Tupac, but the thing is, you know, his mom was dealing with a demon herself, so I understand like the dark hidden in that. But it relates back to Tupac, you know, coming to the world with being poor and, you know, going, and, you know, we all come into this, you know, cold, troubled world. Really sad to think about how many children yeah, have baby, right? this sort of thing. Yeah. Seeing your parent constantly in this kind of altered state and feeling helpless. Cameron yeah, then goes on to talk about how, with his mother's boyfriend always being around, he started to get acquainted with the drugs as well and goes on to begin yeah, selling. I, yeah. In the third verse, he talks... Yeah, because, you know, he growing up with that, he's seeing it, so it's like, okay, they doing it, I'm doing it. it you know, they setting the model. Sort of, with that drug, with the drug um, thing. About his mom being jealous of his relationship with the drugs and how he gains money from it while she pays to see him. Yeah. The song ends with him explaining that his mom had to be hospitalized yeah. because of an overdose and that they both ended up arrested. The last line Jeez. of the rap is, but that's what we get, fucking with drugs. Which I think ends up off pretty perfectly. Yeah, it, it just basically sums up the consequences of what you get yourself into. Number three, of Nicki Minaj only. Now it's time to step out of the lyrical speculations and into symbolism. It's no surprise that people have linked the Illuminati to the rap game. There are a ton of people who think that the music video for only is about the Illuminati using mind control devices on people. Oh my goodness. Illuminati, Illuminati. That they have the perfect technology that allows them to take over people's minds and that they will be using it to crack into our subconscious and suck out your soul. Morphing you what? into a new person. This comes from the people trapped. Turn you into a new person and suck out your soul.
Yeah, that's next in the music video, the two Stop colors standing on soul. either side of Chris Brown heck? that are supposed to represent light that's and dark. darkness and the butterfly in the music video that is a symbol of change when someone morphs from their normal self into a mind-controlled being. The only thing I don't get about this is if I was in the Illuminati, why would I put hints in rap music videos? Shouldn't I just keep all my plans secret and keep taking over the world? At number two on the list today, we have a bowl. Um, you trying to take over the world is rough like why would you want to why would she want to have that much responsibility like like what for more love thing by 50 cent we all know 50 cent as the rapper who famously got shot nine times yeah but in this 2005 track he really hits us with a harsh reality after a first listen this song sounds like a love song but it is really 50 rapping from the point of view of the world's most addictive drug heroin Heroin is very ingrained in the world of entertainment, but it is just as ingrained in the heroin capital of the United States, Baltimore, Maryland. One of the harshest lines in the song is, if you give birth, I'll already be in love with your kids. This is in reference to the fact that if a mother is doing heroin during pregnancy, not only is there a chance that she could lose the pregnancy, but there is also yeah, a chance the that the baby will be, will be born with the drugs in yes. their system, causing them to have to go through a very painful withdrawal. I have a look at that song, song like that. He says, and we'll be hand in hand when we walk through those pearly gates, and to see to that, I'm going to do whatever it takes. This is 50's way of describing how the drug will do everything to take over your life until it ultimately leads to your death. And coming at the number one spot, we we have Kevin Gates XXL to the Not Kevin Gates! Kevin Gates is my boy! That's my favorite, 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 favorite rapper! 2014 Cypher. In this song, Kevin Gates says, Killed oh. my brother, so I took him from his family. When I got some tears tattooed on my face, now I'm, I'm branded. branded. You might have yes. this play, but apparently Kevin Gates' brother was killed by a gang member, and he wasn't going to take this lying down. Gates found the guy who took his brother's life and took him out himself. Yes. He wasn't going to wait for the police to get involved. Yes. This was personal. The tattoos on his face it says in the Bible, though, if you kill someone, you ought to be killed. You know, someone is going to eventually redeem the death of the other person. That that's just how it worked, man. That he committed murder. The good book says it all, man. Affiliated with some gangs. That is a bold move to put that into a song. This guy is really putting everything out in the open. Didn't Bobby Schmurter go to jail for the exact same thing? Maybe this is past the statute of limitations. I'm not really sure how the law works. I didn't know you could use rap lyrics to put someone in jail. Rap and lyricism is basically you speaking to the people however you want to speak to the people and relay a message, bro. So, I mean, all of a sudden, just because it's not a crime. If we got freedom of speech, it's not a crime just to put out what you already experienced, bro. Like, what are you saying, bro? But apparently, that's something that can totally happen. All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. So, all right, guys, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I hope y'all love this video. And if y'all want us to react to more better and legendary videos like this one, just comment down below because we got you, baby. We got you. Peace.